Hi, my name is Vinay and uh, in this I would be demonstrating how to make an inverter with multi-finger and which can drive a higher capacitive load. Okay. So in the last video I shown to make an inverter a simply one so I just redo it. So I am using a 14 nanometer technology rule file. So this is a pinpet technology based rule file and all the transistors I will be using are pinpet. So let's make quickly. So I last time I made a 4 pin uh, pinpet inverter. So this is n type so you can see the current. Okay. That is uh, the P type. So four pin same. Only the current is lesser. But the P type, it's not balanced, but that's okay because it's what our motive is. So I just join these two. Okay. So you can just join them, or you can select this stretch and move, and just join these gates. So I use the palette to apply the signals. What's the signal for the simulation? So this is the ground VDD for the PMOS one terminal and VDD for the envelope. I will apply a square clock to the gate input. So I used in 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 as low and high. Just assign it and take a virtual node and apply it to this output terminal. Okay, I just call it a P out. Okay, this is the clock and maybe the convenience to be in. And Oh, okay. So you see this little bit came in. I just did that. Okay. So let's simulate this. So yeah, it works. Let's rise and fall down three and two. Absolutely perfect. One microwave of power consumption. But now I apply a small load to it. Okay. So last time I applied zero point zero five, which is almost five centifarad. So I simulate again. And we can see that the rise and fall time increasing to 12 and 8 and the uh, power consumption also reaches to 14 microwatts but that's okay now the point is that if my load is huge my load is around 0.1 picofarad okay now 0.01 or 0.1 is good 0.1 is big and huge and I simulate this so you see that uh, the output tries to climb up, but it cannot simply cannot and the power is 60 microwatt and Even though you give an ample amount of time That is you simulate for five nanoseconds still you see that the output is not rising It just goes up and down in a triangular fashion and uh, the output is not scaling up so that's simple because due to high load capsule load and the transistors are not having enough current to charge and discharge the output in a given time period of 0 0.1 nanosecond. So either you give him ample amount of time to charge and discharge. For example, I just double click on V in and make this as 2 nanosecond low and 2 nanosecond as high and simulate this. So now you can see that, yeah, for the same 5 nanosecond uh, time scale of simulation, uh, it's able to rise and fall, but you can see the fall time is almost 100 picosecond and rise time is 130 picosecond. So if this is okay, then there is your solution that you just work at the lower clock speed. But many of times our applications require high speed uh, inversion of the signals. The signals are at very high frequency, maybe 1 gigahertz or close to that or maybe even higher. So this inverter may not work because this has enormous amount of time delay. So I just remove this. Or maybe okay, I just save it somewhere. So I just save it on my desktop and I say this inverter one. Okay. Yeah. And I just create a new file. So to make an inverter which can drive a load of uh, one peak of 0.1 picofarad you just need a transistor with a huge amount of current capability so let's say you have to do the math and you have to find out that how much current it will require so let's say uh, my math says that the, the current required was around 4 milliampere or maybe 5 milliampere so how many pins I may require 
So that's our 15 and 45. Yeah. So around 45 fins will give me uh, that amount of uh, current to drive the load. So you can see 45 fins will give me 5 million pair of current. And then I place on the clipboard, you can see it's a huge length, I mean, huge wide so, transistor. But that has to be because this is the amount of width you have to give him with more fins so that he can have more current. But this width transistor will be very difficult to fit around in any of the given layout. So I will not be using this one. Uh, instead of that, I will increase the number of fingers. So I may make around fingers as six and make the number of fins as seven, right? Seven and seven. Okay, so if I have seven number of fingers and uh, seven is the number of fins, so then you can see that the current is around 5.1, so that's okay, maybe. Uh, six will be a little less, less than five, and seven will be higher, but that's okay. <clears throat> So here you can see that I just place on the clipboard. So this is much better. It will have a rectangular shape as compared to this one with a long uh, aspect ratio is not correct. So here we have like kind of aspect ratio of 10 is to 1 and here we have our aspect ratio of 4 is to 3. So this aspect ratio is much better than this long white one. Okay, so I will be using this one. Now we need a PMOS with the, around the same current capability, 5.6 milliampere. So I just increase the number of fins as uh, 9. So 10 is quite over, maybe 9 is very close to 5.6, it's 5.5. Maybe I will accept that. So 9 is the number of fins. So I just bring it along, align it to some extent. Yeah. Because if I used a single number of finger transistor of PMOS and tried to get that 5.6, I would have to maybe go to 18. Yeah, yeah. so um, 65 would have been the number of fins of the PMOS. So there you can see that this would have been much more longer than the NMOS. Whereas this one and this one are the same. In fact, this one has more current as compared to this because this was 5.6 and this is around 5.7, 5.5, sorry. This guy has a little slightly less, sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so the aspect ratio plays an important. This is difficult to fit around in any of the given layout. Whereas this aspect ratio would be much more easier. So I just remove these two long ones. So these are the number of fingers increasing are beneficial. So in number of fingers, we have transistors in parallel or series that we can decide. So when we say it's uh, fingers, so here we have, so if we have this as a transistor, so Micron places all the transistors side by side. So this is the second one. Let's say this is the third one. This is the third finger. So these are all side by side. Okay. So if you want to just use this transistor in serially, okay, so you just supply the input here and take the output from here. Okay. And if you want them to be in parallel, so what to be done? So you just short the alternate pins. Okay. You just short these alternate pins and make them in parallel, okay? So this will create them in a parallel format, okay? And obviously for parallel, you have to join the gates also, okay? So Microman already does this, Why? Why? So here you can see that, uh, This is one of the drain and this is the source in between this is the gate and this is the next transistor. So we have the gate and drain as common to this one and the next one. 
So you can see that they are all in series if I apply the input from here and take the output from here. Okay. Okay. Now I have to make them parallel. I take the metal one layer and short the nodes which are coming out from the top side so they will be all drains and if i short all the ones which are coming out from the bottom side then all these transits come in parallel the only difference is that i have to select the fin fed gate layer and short these ones too so all the gates are shorted now so this nmos becomes in parallel now on the PMOS side, the same stuff I have to do. I have to short the gate material, okay, and make them common with the NMOS. So yes, they become common to each other. I select the metal one layer and short the nodes which are coming out from the bottom side. And if I extend a little bit, so yep, so it shorts with the NMOS nodes too. I just bring it outside a little bit so that we can easily apply inputs and outputs. Then on the top side of the PMOS, I select the metal one layer and short the nodes which are coming out from the top side. So that will become the VD of the PMOS. Now my inverter is ready for the simulation. I have to just apply the simulation nodes. So I take a VD supply, connect to the anvil. Take the VD supply for the PMOS1 terminal. Take the ground and connect on the bottom side of the NMOS. And visible node for the output node. So we, we may call it as Vout. And take the clock. And connect the gate input. So this I call it gain. And our time low would be 0.1 and 0.1 assign it. The only thing is remaining is we have to apply cap virtual load to the output. So I apply a virtual load of 0.1, keep up with it. Yeah, now we are ready to simulate. So we can just reduce the second time and make it 5 nanoseconds. Or maybe 2 is good. So there you can see that uh, this design is able to rise and fall the output and the rise time is around 11 picosecond and the fall time is around 10 picosecond and okay that will keep on jittering but if we see this table one 9.8 and 9.6 so you can see that they are very very close to each other so rise and fall time are of the same order and uh, <clears throat> it is able to simulate or oscillate and clock frequency of 0.2 uh, nanosecond of clock period okay so this is an in inverter in fact based inverter which in, has capability to invert and in, around uh, 4.8 gigahertz signal with a rise and fall time of 9 and 9.8 and 9.6 okay the power consumed is around 0 0.3 milliwatt but that has to be because the load is quite higher so this is how you can make a multi-finger pin fat inverter which can drive a load of 0.1 picofarad in ease. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.